Okay, you're all set. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kobe and Morris, and hi to everyone at the JCC, um, the spectators of the film Queen Shoshana. Um, I'm very, um, my name is Daphna Shitrit. I'm very excited to be moderating this uh, conversation, this transatlantic pre recorded conversation with you. Um, um, and I want to start off with a very straightforward question, um, which was the first question that came to mind was uh, it's why now, why, why shoot this film now? Because, you know, I, I mean, to me, you know, Shoshana Damari is of course one of the greatest divas, but also when I was growing up, she seemed kind of, and I'm saying it sadly, also sort of obsolete and something that belongs to the past, like her mommy that, you know, although, you know, she was everywhere, obviously, and um, my mom loved her very much, but it, it seemed outdated in a way. And I'm, I'm interested um, in the reasons why were you interested in Shoshana Damari right now? And do you see it in some way as uh, timely? Well, um, the answer uh, is folded in your question, actually. Mm. Uh, exactly because of that. Exactly because of the reason that she's considered as something of an old, uh, dusted uh, icon. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we understood that there was never a movie made about her. Uh, and that really astonished us. You know, it was really uh, surprising to find out that how come such a diva uh there was no no documentary made about her uh and then we started the research and we found out such a spectacular and unique woman that crosses you know styles and years and fashion and uh, music uh st different music styles uh, and and we just, we were captured by her and that's it. We didn't need any other excuses. Right. Uh, just, just the personality, the talent and her, her life story. Yeah. When, when we get into the story, we've been in shock because uh, we felt like what? This story wait for us to make the, this uh, great singer all those years, nobody tell her story in uh, such an interesting way. Yeah. I, I must add something about her. Um, thing is that I believe that her personality and her life story is uh, even much more relevant today than, than when she was uh, the great diva. Because we are actually... Uh, making a portrait in this film of a very strong woman, independent woman. And in our times, we felt that the world should know about it. Um, right, yeah. And I'm gonna, go, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to touch upon this subject of this diva. Uh, but before that, I want to ask another question um, that is not related to Shoshana in particular, but um, it's something that I sort of experienced after watching the film, I felt sort of heavy hearted. And not only, not only because of Shoshana's particular story, but also just generally there was something that I felt was a certain like melancholic undertone in the film. And um, I was trying you know, to figure out why. And I, I feel like there's also a theme in this film that transcends Shoshana. And it has to do with a certain um, melancholy of the passing of time. And it, it also expresses itself in you know, the frame sort of scene where we see the unpacking of her archives um, and it's reoccurring and there's a certain melancholy to it. And we see sort of, we see the story of a diva that is, you know, being molded into a diva, and we can talk about that as well. Um, and then, you know, flourishes into this magnificent woman here in the United States, and then comes yeah. back to Israel. 
and in Israel also she sort sort of basically wilts and and we see the passing of time and old age in one movie and I think that is also very moving and um, to me it made me feel melancholic and and there's I feel like it's something you guys touched upon in the film in an implicit manner but it's yeah an abstract theme I would say that comes across and I was wondering if it was if it was intentional or it was of course implicit. yeah it was intentional yeah actually uh, for people who didn't watch our uh, previous films we we deal a lot with the passing of time uh, we started actually Kobe and me we knew each other when he came to me and wanted to make uh, a documentary about his own family, a family of uh, photo Farage family right. that that uh, for those who don't, who don't know, they were icons of uh, photography in Israel, of family photographies and of uh, uh, wedding photographies and so on and so on, but they were a real empire. Um, that's how we got to know each other. We started working on it, on this film. And, and the basic idea of this film was also longing for the past, uh, dealing with the, the passing time. Um, and then we made our next film about Yossi Banai, a great Israeli actor, and only with the, uh, archival materials and from his own voice. And this film was sort of a memoir uh, of his. When he discusses, he doesn't tell us his life story. Uh, he ponders about uh, the passing of time mm -hmm. and, and, and the subject of time and time as, a, as an idea. And uh, this is a big motive also in Queen Shoshana. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it comes I across. Think it's very strong. Strong. When it but comes to, to biograph, some uh, in, in biograph, you you get uh, those feeling uh, mm -hmm. that life goes very fast. Yeah, because it's the timeline of the life of the portrait that you made. Yeah, and I think Shoshana Damari has those had the, the, this line in her life. The mm -hmm. melancholic tone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What's going inside uh, together, her heart. Right. Yeah. <laughs> together with that, I want to say that um, Shoshana, uh, when I first uh, when we started researching her life, for me, she was sort of uh, Norma Desmond from Sunset Boulevard. Mm -hmm. uh, she was this diva that was forgotten and um yeah there was this tone this hollywood tone dark and romantic and longing for a uh, different past and yeah. yeah and you know this brings me to another question i was thinking about and I, you know this film sort of joins a line of movies documentary films about female singers their success in career, their failure in relationships. Sometimes, you know, um, it's even more tragic, like in the case of Whitney Houston, um, in the case of Amy Winehouse. And, um, and there is sometimes exploitation involved with either, you know, an agent, a family member, um, a producer. Um, and, um, and we've seen such productions also from Israel about Ofra Chaza, also a Yemenite singer. Mm -hmm. uh, Raymond Abuksis, a film that her daughter uh, uh, produced um, and, and shot, directed. And, um, and sort of, they're, they're, they all, the, the theme that emerges from these films is a certain brand of diva melancholy that you touched upon already. The certain melancholic tone that you are talking about in her soul. And, right. and, 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 it's, you know, it has to do with the um, fact, with, with the failure of family life or family relation or relationships. And the, the sacrifice. And the sacrifice and the success. And it seems for a moment in with Shoshana Damali's story that she 
she seems to break the spell in the first half of the film because there seems to be equality in the relationships, right? And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, and she's the one to leave her uh, husband, even though the letters from her daughter Nava are very, very sad and moving, there seems to be a deep relationship between them, a deep intimacy. Um, and, and, there, and it seems like for a second that she breaks the spell and she's, and, and she's not in this, uh, you know, melancholic trap of, of the diva, the diva melancholy. And she sort of managed to transcend it. By the end of the film, uh, we see, and it's, it's, it's not completely clear why, because there was no story of abuse or there was no, you know, drugs. And, but, but it's, it's not really clear why. And, and I was wondering if you can maybe talk a little bit, a little bit about why and, and maybe break the mystery for us of this uh, deep melancholy, you know? Oh, wow. Uh, well. Question, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what do you want to want? What do you want to know? The reason why she she became like a, a not a good mother? That's what I. Mean. No, 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 not no. She's, the reason no. why she felt it seems like by the end of the film that you know it's it's not really clear why was she you know when Dan Reichel for instance says that it breaks his heart that she didn't have any plans for Friday evening and and she had she managed with all these relationships these companionships very deep and it seems like she was a very very kind person to have the possibility to cultivate these kind of alternative relationships but yes. but she was but she still was you know to a great degree it seems like she was very lonely um and 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 in a very deep way in an objective way, she she was also uh, uh, hugged by many friends in her age. Yes, that's yeah. that's what she, she was yeah. 83 or 82, and she had many uh, young guys who kept her and right. uh, bodyguards. But, yeah, uh, yeah, she needs her daughter close to her, and this uh, pain she can't uh, fix. Yeah. I think it's more than uh, the and relationship. Also the past, I think, the big past, the big success. Mm -hmm. been, uh, I, believe that, some, yeah. I believe that it's more 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 than her dealing with uh, the relationship of her and her daughter mm -hmm. uh, it's bigger than that I believe that we don't really know the answer mm -hmm. first of all mm -hmm. um, she gave uh, many interviews but she talked a lot, but she didn't say nothing, actually. Right. She was a very intimate person. And uh, from our research and from the archival materials and uh, hours and hours of interviews that she gave, uh, we couldn't really find out what's the core of this uh, melancholy that you're talking about. We, and I agree. It's yeah. there. Yeah. Um, I believe that at the end of it, it's a, it's a matter of, of, of uh, personality, of uh, some kind of mental structure that she had. Uh, for an instance, she, she preferred friends on family members. Mm -hmm. She surrounded herself with many friends, but yeah. she, from what we know, she was not really in touch with uh, with her family. Yeah, understand or cannot understand about her character or personality. But I believe that there were things that are deeper and that we cannot really explain. But it's really it, it's there all along. Yeah, it's there and from from a very certain part of our life. I think it's, it's not only it's uh, after after the death there. of her husband and uh, after the death of Vilensky. Uh, I, I believe that she felt like she was left alone. And uh, that's exactly the time when her daughter left Israel and went to live in Canada. They were in touch daily, morning and evening. They they talked on the phone constantly and they loved each other very much. But the truth is that 
Next time her daughter came to Israel was only in a funeral. Uh, that's I think, deep. I think the tone, the tone that we are talking about uh, is also, uh, uh, you can find it in our three characters. It's not only Shoshana. Also her husband Shlomo and Nava, they have it. They have the way, the, the way they write, uh, the felt, the, the thing that they, they feel, uh, felt. It's very, uh, uh, you can find it in every letter they send right. one each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of a theme that crosses in the relationship. It's something also, also in Shlomo uh, diaries, you can find it when he when he was very very young uh, kid in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, uh, he write uh, those feelings. Yeah, yeah. Even in the Shlomo first and... words that uh, of Shlomo's that appear in the movie, he, when he describes in a sort of a poem about how he fell in love with Shoshana, it's a dark poem. Right. It's not a, it's a, not a light song about, uh, it's not a light poem about how I fell in love with her and she was so beautiful. It's, it's really dark. Right. Uh, and I think that in, in many ways, this darkness. <laughs> I think, I think we, we uh, pay more attention in, in melancholic, but we need to understand that she was very funny and very. Uh, she were a good. Was a good friend. Yeah, it does not. Contradict. Was, it comes uh, off. She seems. Yeah, she, it it really comes comes through that she was very funny, which was also a novelty uh -huh. to me. I didn't know about that, but yeah, she comes off as like a, you know, a very well-rounded entertainer, like you say, you know, <laughs> like a very perfect entertainer. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now I want to ask about. A question that has to do more with like filmmaking and there is a very interesting combination in a film of um, archive material just general archive material pulled from archives uh, Shoshana Damari's archives and sort of interviews and um, shootings of you of that you did and first of all some particular um, archive that I'm interested I'm curious about where she's uh, singing in Arabic in Jerusalem which is fantastic where to get it from mm -hmm. um, it's really remarkable and um, and then also um, it seems like you're using the general archive material um, as a way to construct and build a narrative and if you can talk a little about the uh, your work process in uh, building the narrative from archives, you know, where, you know, for instance, I think that was very beautiful um, how you sort of portrayed the resonance of her voice um, and, and how far reaching it was. Um, um, With the you radios, know, you mean? The radios, yeah, and, and, and the, you know, the American homes um, that switch, you know, stations and television. Um, I thought that was very beautiful. And uh, if you can talk a little bit about your process in working with the archives. Um, so these are, you know, this is one question and then a small straight, straightforward question about this uh, footage from Jerusalem where she sings in Arabic. Okay, first of all, let's start with the footage from Jerusalem. It, it comes from the Israeli broadcasting uh, t television. Um, it was aired on, uh, I believe it's something like 71 or 72. Wow. Around that time, we found it, and it was like a treasure. No one knew about it. Everyone forgot about it, or whatever. Yes. We just—it was like finding a diamond. And, uh, about about our work with archives, um, we don't start off with working with archives. We we first start with telling the story, the narrative. Uh, by audio, uh, we work a lot with radio interviews. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you you can hardly see a filmed interview with Shoshana in this film. Right. There is, we work a lot with uh, uh, radio interviews along the years, uh, and then you have this blank picture where she's not filmed. So what do you put there? How many still pictures can you put there? You must find a way to, 
to get this through to the spectators, uh, the feeling, the, the scent of the time. Uh, um, so then you start looking for archives, which are more or less accurate to the period we're talking about. And, uh, and you illustrate it with archives. But these archives has to be, you know, not manipulative, not too manipulative. Right. I mean, they have to, they have to bring the, the colors and the smells of the time and the right soundtrack underneath. Um, yeah. And it's like an, uh, how do you say, embroidery? Yeah, uh, embellishment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I thought that was very cool. Um, uh, we get a note from Juliet. She says we're reaching around 20 minutes. Um, so I do have a final question. Mm -hmm. um, I think it also is a good, it's a fitting final question that sort of, um, you know, encapsulates many of what, many of the things we talked about. And Shoshana de Mali was notoriously mysterious and it comes through in the film and it comes through through what you're saying about, you know, there were barely any interviews of her. So out of necessity, you sort of worked with the archives, which I think yielded a very interesting and very cool and somewhat also like funny and entertaining result. I really liked it. Um, and um, yeah, there is a line where she says in the movie, I will reveal what I can reveal, you know, very ironically, which I think is very telling. Um, um, and um, I was wondering, was there anything you, felt you, you left out because it was either too much or it didn't quite fit with the narrative or you didn't know what to do with it and was and is something you know still sort of worthy of telling but was but didn't fit um the film something that uh, left out i understand the question first of all i believe that uh, after we worked for uh, almost four years on this movie um she remains a uh, riddle, mm -hmm. even for us. Yeah. So that, that's the big answer to your question. But we, if we get deeper, um, there was this day that we came to, to shoot the unpacking of her uh, inheritance yeah. of those crates. And uh, it's, a, it's a lucky day for documentarists because um, it's rare that documentarists get the access to an inheritance of a person, of his private life, his diaries. And this moment was very happy for us. You know, it's a grand moment for us. But at the same time, we felt uncomfortable because we understood that we're getting into her really private life. Right. And uh, not only, you know, diaries or answering machine cassettes or whatever, it's also her sleepers, her bed gown. Uh, and we felt un uncomfortable with that. And we understood that we have to draw a line somewhere and keep her from not being too gossipy, not being yellowish and uh, respect her because she's not with us anymore. And actually none of the characters of this uh, film are with us. Uh, they're all gone. And, and so we, uh, we made this uh, decision that we're keeping really the big secrets. I don't believe that there were uh, many big secrets that we left behind. There were all, what we left behind is the way things were told or uh, we made our choices to keep to keep Shoshana still a queen and and her husband such a good-hearted person and her daughter such a diamond yeah uh, yeah this all came through in the film really really nicely and in a very moving way and also in a very respectable way to I think her inheritance and to the person she was which she was mysterious, but yet you managed, I think, to sort of portray a very- that Shed a little light on her. Yeah, and portray a very, very live image of her 
and you know, in her time in the United States, which is little known to the Israeli public, I think still. Yeah, um, it was a surprise here. Over here, it was really a surprise. Yeah. Just... Yeah, great. Um, thank you, Kobe, and thank you, Maury, so much for this yeah. rich film. Thank you, Daphne. Yeah, and f- thank, thank you for, you for, uh, for the support uh, in our film. Uh, JCC Manhattan support us. Yeah, thank you, JCC. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys all right thank you everyone and bye-bye bye-bye thank you